Hey everybody, it's Barb Schaffern here from Schaffern Herbals, live from my apothecary here in my basement, aka my husband's wine cellar that I stole part of. Uh, today I'm going to talk about infused oils. Um, I have a picture here of some roses, some yellow and pink ones that I infused in olive oil and I let sit in my apothecary and I strain it when I use it. And some examples of some strained rose oil here would be an example of rose uh, infused in avocado and olive oil, which I use in my products. And here I have an example of rose oil, grapeseed oil infused with roses. And do I have one more? Yes. Here's just an example of some olive oil um, that had roses infused in it, and then I strained the roses out. So what's great about infusing roses into oils is that you get a lot of the benefits of rose essential oil, which is $100 an ounce in some cases. You get the same benefits of roses in an infused oil um, without the expense of the rose essential oil. So I'm going to show you how to make some infused rose oil. Um, remember that your roses should be organic. We shouldn't have pesticides on them. So only use the roses that you know are clean and safe and healthy. All right, let's go outside. All right, so before we go outside, I'm going to pick some of my tools that I'm going to use. Actually for this, just to snip my roses, I'm just going to use these pruners. So I'm going to go out to the garden, throw on my little garden swabbers, and away we'll go. Hey, here I am. Always a good idea to wear gloves too when you're working with roses. You know what I'm gonna do right now? I'm gonna take some time to smell my roses and they smell great. But the roses I'm gonna use for my project today are these red ones, these bright red ones. And all I'm gonna do is just snip off the roses. Putting below the stem, cutting the rose heads off the rose flowers. Now if you leave these on, a fruit will, will form and that's called a rose hip and it looks like a little berry. But our hips aren't formed just yet so we just have the flowers and the petals and that's what we need today. Here I am sitting with my French lavender, my uh, lavandula and augustifolia and my Latin's not so great. And you can see that there's all kinds of buds on here. I do have a second species of lavender here that's not quite in bloom yet and it's not as big. But you know what, if you're ever having a cranky day, if you just smell lavender, it really does lift your energy and lift your spirits. So I really like sitting here with my lavender. But I'm gonna snip some of these buds off because what I'm gonna do is actually add some lavender buds with the roses, petals that I have. And um, we're gonna actually make a lavender and rose infused oil. And we'll talk more about what the properties of lavender and rose are as far as skincare goes in a little while. All right, so let's just review what we're going to need to make today's infused oil. Okay, I got roses from my garden. I have lavender buds from my garden and a couple stems. Okay, and I'm going to use mason jars to infuse my oils in. I like to recycle, and honestly, these Priano jars from Aldi are awesome because you can see there's all kinds of measurements in there, so you know exactly how much uh, you're making, and if you want to pour some out, you know how much you pour out. So I really do like these Priano um, mason jars. But at this point, I'm, for the simplicity of the video, I'm going to use a jar that already has the label taken off. All right? The next thing we're going to need is an oil to infuse it in. And I'm going to tell you that avocado oil is good for dry skin. Olive oil is good for normal or combination skin. And an oil like safflower or sunflower would be the oil that you would want to use if you have oily skin. And today I'm going to make a safflower infused oil, um, well, an infused safflower oil. I like to use this brand. I get it at my local grocery store. And I've used it in my products for the past five years and it works great. Um, so what I'm going to show you how to do uh, is you're, I'm going to show you how to put these things into this jar and then make a water bath. And you can make a water bath in either a crock pot, if you don't have a crock pot, which is really the ideal way so you don't have to watch it all day, although you should be careful not to have a fire, um, but you can also do it on the stove top. So let's cut to that and I'll show you what to do. 
So there are several steps when you make an infused oil. The first is to get your water bath ready, and then the second is to put your herbs into the jar, and then the third is to fill the jar with oil, and then the fourth is to set the uh, contents of, in the jar inside a water bath. Okay, you can have two options for a water bath. My preferred method is the crock pot on low or even keep warm setting, and you're going to Add water and fill it up to about a third of the way full or until it hits about half of the jar whenever you stick the jar in. If you don't have a crock pot, you can simply do it on the stove. You're going to have a very low flame. You're going to fill the pot about halfway with water and then you're going to set this in here. It's very difficult to do it on the stove because you don't want it to boil because the heat can destroy some of the chemical constituents. So really the crock pot is the preferred method, but if you just keep this on super low or you use your super small burner on low and then stand there and make sure you're watching it or doing something because you're going to need it to sit for four to six hours in this water bath. So that's why you can see a crock pot is probably the best solution. But if you don't have that, then just take your lowest burner and a pot, fill the pot halfway, and then you can stick your jar in there once we have it filled, okay? So one important thing, very important thing, water is not really a friend of oil. And a lot of people will take these herbs and let them sit for sometimes a day and dry out a little bit to get as much water out of them as possible. Because what's going to happen if there's a lot of water content, uh, your oil will get cloudy and it also can get moldy. So you want as little water as possible and for these plants to be um, as dry as possible. Now I do make mine, uh, what I, these are clean, it just rained, so these plants are both very clean. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to wash them right before I do this either because I don't want any water droplets on the, on the plant material that I'm going to use to make my infused oil. Okay, so make sure your, your products, your plant material is clean and dry with absolutely the least amount of water as possible, but you don't want to have them dry out for too many days or too many hours because you might lose some um, vital constituents. All right, so all you do, you have your clean, dry plant material. These are going to have a little bit of water. My oil might be a little cloudy, but that's okay. I'm just going to stick them in to the mason jar. I'm going to do the lavender and then in go my roses. I could put just the whole, I could put the whole rose stem in there just like that and make it pretty. Or I can just rip the, the petals off. Obviously it depends on what you're going to do. Today um, I'm just going to make one jar and I'm filling it as full as I can with material because I want to make a nice strong oil with as much of the dissolved plant constituents. What's going to happen is I'm going to put the oil on, put the lid on, and then the warmth of the water bath, which is very important, it must not boil, it must only be warm. The warmth uh, will help the plant constituents that we need for our skin to leach out into the oil and make the infused oil. Now, a lavender infused oil or a rose infused oil, this oil is not going to smell like roses and lavender. Okay, that's an essential oil that has those scents. You might have a slight fragrance depending on the species of roses that you use or the species of lavender, but do not expect that this rose infused oil or this rose and lavender infused oil is going to smell like the flowers because it's not. But it's going to have all the goodies in it that we need, that our skin needs, so that we can feed our skin from the outside in. Okay, so the plant materials are on here. And here you can see the formation of a rose hip. This is where you can see right underneath it, this underneath here is gonna get a red berry on it. And that's what we use to make rose hip oil. Rose hips are also extremely high in vitamin C. So rose hip, H-I-P, that is the fruit of the rose. All right, so I'm gonna take my safflower oil and I'm gonna just pour it in here, fill it up as much as I can. Wait for some of the bubbles to get the air out of there so that we can make sure we get it as full as we can. Okay, it looks so pretty. It's not going to look this pretty by the time we're done because the color is going to fade. It's going to look a little brown. 
So if you like pictures of pretty things, you should probably take a picture of your product now because in the, in the next four to six hours, it's not going to be this beautiful. All right? So you want to shake it a little bit. Maybe top it off a little bit more if you can. And then you're just going to set it into the crock pot. And I'm going to set mine on keep warm and I'm going to leave it here for six hours. You know, I've left it as long as eight hours. I put it in in the morning and just checked on it during the day. Remember, you do not want the water to boil. You just want it to be warm so that that can help the flour material to leach out some of its stuff. And you can fill it with water up to about half or three quarters of the way of the jar. Um, it's really kind of up to you. You can do it halfway and then just shake it maybe every half hour or every hour. Just kind of shake it. Make sure you don't burn yourself um, just to keep things mixed up. And that's how we make an infused oil. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what are the constituents of lavender and roses that are so good for our skin. And then what can we do with this infused oil? So we have our oil, we've taken it out of the water bath. It was there for seven and a half hours in the crock pot. Um, the, you can see that the color of the roses is faded. It's not bright red anymore. The color of the lavender buds has also faded. Um, and you can also see that, that this particular oil is a little cloudy. We knew it would be because we have water. We had some water in our flowers um, that we, we didn't let dry. So I'm gonna use this oil tomorrow to make some salves. So I'm not really worried about that because when it gets heated up, the water will come out of it and, and it's gonna be fine. But for long-term preservation, you do not wanna have water and it's very important to dry them. So let's review what we've done. Okay, we made today a lavender and rose infused oil. Okay, so why do we infuse oil? The heat plus the oil dissolves the constituents in the flowers so that they can be readily used by the skin. A constituent is just a fancy word for the active chemicals. And some plants can have as many as 300 active chemicals in them. And that even includes the foods that you eat also, which come from plants, have tons of different chemicals in them. Okay, so we're gonna dissolve these constituents into our oil. And then when we put the oil on our skin, the safflower oil gets absorbed into the skin and it takes those chemicals with it. And then our body can use those chemicals to help process this, um, this, the cells process when they grow. The most important thing to remember is that lavender, 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 and rose both have cell regrowth constituents, okay? So what that means is that when it goes through your skin, it helps your cells to grow and regenerate, and that gives us fresher looking skin. This is super important for mature skin, but it's also important for young skin as well because we all want our skin to be the healthiest that it can be. It's the largest organ of our body. So by infusing the oil, we give our skin access to the nutrients with the active chemicals in these particular flowers. Okay, so remember our four steps were first to make a water bath. The second was to put dry herbs in the jar. The third is to put the olive oil, or to put the, in this case, safflower oil in the jar. And the fourth thing is to put jar in warm, remember we don't want it to boil, warm water bath. And that's how we made our infused oil. And the last topic I want to discuss is what do we do with an infused oil? Oh, for chaffron herbals, I do several things with my infused oils, okay? So the first thing I do is I make serums. 
So I'll take that infused oil, I'll add some essential oils, I'll add some vitamin E, some vitamin C, and some vitamin A into my serum. And then I might also add some high, hyaluronic acid, which when used topically on the face absorbs um, 3,000 times its weight in water so that you're getting hydration into your skin. So when it sits on your skin, it acts like a sponge and it just sucks the water in from the environment, keeping your skin moisturized with water. That's what hyaluronic acid does. So these I call power ingredients and I buy these. Um, these are not necessarily organic. They're uh, power ingredients, okay? So I'll use an infused oil to make a serum. And then you can also make a salve. Okay, so a salve, you're going to mix it with beeswax. Okay, so you're going to take a little bit of beeswax and some of your infused oil, warm it in a double boiler, and you can make a, a skin balm or a soothing salve. Okay, you can still add some of these same things, but if we add the, the, the beeswax that's melted and we let it cool, we're going to get a thicker, um, heavier, uh, emollient moisturizing uh, oil okay so we can make a salve with it and the third thing that you can do with it just one third there's probably several more things but you can make a sugar scrub okay so very simple you get sugar from the grocery store you put it in a bowl you dump in this oil um, until you get a consistency. I kind of like a dampened sugar. I don't like it to be too oily. You put it in a jar and you can use that to exfoliate your face at night. You can wash your face with that sugar scrub, rinse it with water, wipe it with a warm washcloth, uh, or you, and you can use it all over your body in the shower. One word of caution, if you're using oil and sugar scrub in the shower, your shower floor could get slippery. So make sure you're very careful with that if you're using it all over your body. And then by rubbing, uh, the oil as you're cleansing yourself with the sugar, uh, you're getting those nutrients into your skin, you're exfoliating the dead skin, and it makes your skin very happy because the exfoliation encourages the regrowth. So I hope that you enjoyed our video today and that you're going to be inspired to make your own infused oils. And Thank you so much for watching and please, if you like this video, please like it and please subscribe so that YouTube knows that we have some great information out here for you. And we're teaching you how to be healthy and how to feed your skin from the outside in. So thanks for watching.